Hey summoners, how's it going? My name is Nathan Ng and I'll be your host for our upcoming changes for patch 12.19. This video will provide some deeper insight on the changes that are coming up in the next patch. We'll cover some upcoming balance adjustments and it's worth noting that for the most part, these are the finalized changes. There may be a couple of minor tweaks by the time the patch does release, however, so be aware of that possibility. We have even more changes in our patch rundown next week, but for now, with all of that being said, let's get the video started. We'll begin with all the upcoming skins, and there's a lot of them. Joining the Spirit Blossom lineup, we have Aphilios, Darius, Evelyn, Master Yi, and a prestige edition of Yi, Set, Soraka, Syndra, Tristana, and Yorick. Riot plans on expanding on this popular collection, and I definitely suggest giving them a look, especially if you're into the Japanese style of aesthetics. Rest in peace, everyone's wallet. While we'd normally start with the systems, we're still waiting on some finalized details from Riot, but we'll have those for you in the patch rundown next week. As of now, we do know that Eclipse and Mortal Reminder are potentially up for some changes, so be prepared. That being said, we'll run through the champion changes next, beginning with the top lane. Following some adjustments, Udyr top has been underperforming significantly. To give him a little boost, he's set to receive some increased healing from his W against minions. With some extra sustain, scrapping the top lane should be a little bit easier, especially if he's able to get favorable trades and get to the point where he can zone his enemies. It's free healing basically, and having extra health to work with is essential. The buff Nasus was supposed to receive previously were moved towards the next patch. He's getting a number of buffs, including his Q, W, and Ultimate. For his Q, it's a nice quality of life adjustment. Its bonus range will be increased by 25, making it easier to trade, farm, and even teamfight with. That extra range can be the deciding factor, especially in the late game where he's bound to take a massive chunk of health out of the enemy with a single hit. His W's attack speed cripple will now be increased. And finally, his ultimate's tick rate and size increase are being raised. The latter buff is going to be included because his ultimate's damage radius will also scale with his size. Be on the lookout for him next patch as with this many buffs, he's likely going to find some newfound strength and increased win rates. I know champions like Nasus are frustrating to fight for many of you. If you want to help develop the strategies or mechanics that you need to shut down these types of champions, make sure you contact one of our coaches at ProGuides.com. There are excellent players as well as amazing teachers and can help you learn about specific matchups, tricks for your main champion, or decision making in general. That covers the top lane by the way, so let's move on to the jungle changes next. After absolutely dominating solo queue, Master Yi is receiving some nerfs to keep him in check. He currently holds high win rates as well as insane ban rates across all elos. He's set to receive some direct damage nerfs to his AD growth as well as his E's AD ratio. While these nerfs aren't huge, they certainly have a moderate effect on his damage output. Since Master Yi naturally has an affinity towards attack speed, there will definitely be a noticeable loss of damage. Before moving on, let me ask you a question of the day. Do you prefer playing champions who are mechanically easier to pilot or harder ones? I used to like mechanically difficult champions, but as I get older and my boomer hands can't keep up, I really prefer the simple ones. That way I can focus a lot more on my macro play. Anyway, let me know your answers in the comments down below. Next up in the jungle is Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai has been an impressive force in high elo and that's why she's receiving a nerf as well. To slow down her tempo and early game dueling power, her base AD will be decreased by 3. Aside from the obvious combat effects, this will certainly reduce her clear speed as well, something Rek'Sai is very well known for. As we move out of the jungle, we'll start with some buffs for Echo. He's popular in both the jungle and mid lane, but these upcoming buffs aren't exclusive to either position. Echo is set to receive some damage buffs, but if that bothers you, it's worth mentioning that these damage buffs are targeted at abilities that are harder to land. Namely, his Q's return as well as his ultimate will have their damage raised. Their AP ratios are being increased, which should hopefully not have the unintended effect of popularizing bruiser builds. Fingers crossed for that, but these are some solid buffs and he'll definitely be hitting a lot harder. Fizz is set to receive some buffs as well. If you've been following his progress on the PPE, you should know that they're planning on raising his mana cost from where it was previously placed. Compared to the live server, however, it's going to remain unaffected. Instead, all you'll see if you haven't been scrutinizing his adjustments is that his E will receive some damage buffs moving forward. It's a sizable AP ratio increase, which again shouldn't encourage any bruiser builds while directly buffing AP Fizz. I'm not really excited to see this one. Anyway, let's move on and talk about Syndra. Syndra is arguably set to receive the biggest changes next patch. Her mid-scope update is around the corner, and if you're curious about what's going to happen, then look no further, because I'll give you guys a quick summary right now. The biggest change will be to Syndra's passive. It'll act as a way for her to scale up into an even bigger mid to late game threat. Syndra will now have an extra resource to work with, called Splinters, which she can collect to 120 of. Collecting Splinters will not only restore some mana, but also provide her with some upgrades at certain breakpoints. She'll gain these splinters by damaging enemies using two abilities within 4 seconds, leveling up, and killing cannon minions. At 120 splinters, she'll gain 15% bonus AP. By the very late game, it'll basically be impossible to not hit that cap, but playing well in the early game will heavily reward skilled players by letting them hit huge power spikes faster. That being said, she is set to receive a small nerf to her base health. 
Now moving on to her abilities, her Q will now have its cooldown increased and the orb duration slightly reduced. In return, however, the mana cost will be reduced and she'll be able to carry two charges once she's gained 40 splinters. This is a huge nerf to her early game, as she's definitely one of the stronger level 1 mid laners. However, having two charges to work with is a game changer later on into the game as it'll allow players to burst a little harder and have the opportunity to be a little bit more creative with their ability usage. Her W is remaining largely unchanged, but is receiving some buffs. First, the sphere pickup radius will be increased slightly. In addition, non-sphere units that are picked up will have a brief period where they cannot die. Finally, after collecting 60 splinters, the ability will gain a true damage bonus like it currently holds. However, this bonus will scale up with AP, meaning that in the later stages of the game, it'll be a bit stronger than before. Cinder's E will now have its damage reduced, but have some utility buffs. The scatter angle will be increased, cooldown lowered at early ranks, and the changes of a close range EQ combo failing will be greatly reduced as well. However, the stun duration will be lowered slightly. After gathering 80 splinters, the ability cast radius will be increased again, and also apply a huge slow after the initial crowd control. Finally, her ultimate is where things get crazy. While her Q's cooldown was increased, each level of her ultimate will provide ability haste towards that Q ability specifically. Although her ultimate will deal less damage than before, the bonus that you'll gain from 100 splinters is absolutely insane. Enemies below 15% max health will be executed by the ability. Absolutely crazy, especially if it's a champion that tends to rely on sustain to get them through fights. Examples are Warwick and Zack. Combined with some healing reduction, this ability is going to make Syndra a monster counter pick against some certain champions. That's a lot of changes coming Syndra's way, and I hope you're as excited as I am about them. We're still waiting for some final changes from Riot, including a ton of off-meta build updates, but that covers a good number of them, and the most important one coming up. Make sure you keep an eye on our channel because we'll provide you with a complete patch rundown in a future video very soon. Thank you guys so much for watching, hope you guys enjoyed the video. You can also join our Discord server via the link in the description to be the first to learn about any giveaways or events that we host in the future. Anyway, good luck in your games, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.